look for the way of describing mathematically the concept of deformation. And for this, we use first a very important entity, the formation gradient. Let's see what is it. So now let's consider that we have a body in the reference configuration at the reference times t0, could be 0, could be any other time. We have the equations of motion that provide for every capital particle P that is characterized by the material coordinates capital X. A long time, it says what is the spatial position of the same particle, P prime. P refers to the particle. The same particle that occupies the position P at time t0 and at the current time occupies the, part, the, the, the position P prime. This is what, this is the interest of the concept of motion, movement. But now, let's consider another particle in the neighborhood of P. Neighborhood means an infinitesimal neighborhood. So it, let's consider, also here, of course, this distance is not infinitesimal. Let's make the abstraction and consider that particle Q is a particle which is placed around P, very close to it. Okay? So the distance of P and Q, or the relative position of P and Q, is given by a differential vector that we'll call differential of capital X. There are many of them. This Q can be here, but can be also here, can be also here, can be also any particle in the infinitesimal neighborhood of P. So now, now our concern is what is that relative distance at the present configuration. So at the present time, T, this particle has moved to position Q, Q prime, sorry. The point is, is the relative position, that vector, the same at the reference configuration that at the present configuration? In general, it won. So d small x stands for the relative positions of per particles pq at the present configuration. And dx capital, differential of capital x, is the relative, uh, describes the relative position of particles p and, and q at the initial or reference configuration. So now our goal, our first goal in this chapter, is to describe the relation of d small x, d capital X. What is the relation of the relative, relative, that's the key word, the relative position of these two particles at any a long time in terms of what was their relative position at the reference time? And of course, this done by all particles in the neighborhood of P. You understand the difference of deformation and strain and, and movement? Movement is just absolute position. Deformation, the word deformation, is what we understood as, understand as the relative positions between particles. Okay? So that's the capital issue. So now let's look where is this information? What is saying us? What kind of mathematical entity is saying us what is the relation of this d small x and d capital X? And this is given by the fundamental equation of deformation. Look, imagine that we have the equations of motion. So we have some equations that provide what is the spatial position, small x, in terms of the material coordinates, x1, x2, x3, and time. These, by the way, are the equations of motion, so we already know. These are given in initial notation. These are given in compact notation. This is that. In compact, that is for every index. Okay? <coughs> Look, let's now do a mathematical operation. Let's differentiate this equation with respect to capital X, capital, capital X1, capital X2, capital X3. So how do we differentiate that? Well, differentiate every one of these equations. We take the derivative of that, this function, with respect to x1, <coughs> times differential of x1, plus derivative of this function with respect to x2, times differential of x2, plus derivative of this function with respect to x3, times differential of x3. That's what we call the differential, which is that, using notation, the, the initial notation, and repeated indexes. For every i, for every of these equations, the differential of xy would be obtained mathematically as the partial derivative of the equation of motion xi with respect to every one of the capital X multiplied by differential x. Look, this is a repeated index. This is a monomial, so that means this is a, a summatory. And 
That's it. Okay, now let's define an entity whose component ij is differential of xi with respect to capital XJ. Okay? So this is called fij, which, by the way, will depend on capital X and T. So we can say differential of xi is fij, differential of capital XJ, of course, for ij equal 1 to 3. By the way, what is the expression of that in terms of a compact notation? Look, now from this initial expression, we can extract a compact expression. Look, this is a component i of a vector. This is a, non, a, a talking index. What is the vector whose component i is differential of x i? Well, is differential of vector x. What is the <coughs> component, the vector whose component j is differential of a j, is differential of x? And look, then, this can be identified as the components of a vector f. A tensor, second order tensor, because there are two indices here, f times differential of x, and this, since the repeated index is x, is nothing else, that, nothing else than the duct product of tensor f times differential of x. So, in other words, that's very complex to say, but very easy to, to realize. The differential of this equation, differential of a small x, can be expressed as the product of a second order tensor f, times dot product differential of x. Okay? Look, this tensor, this is the fundamental equation of, of the formation. Look, what is this saying? Okay, look, what is differential of x? That vector. What is differential of capital X? That vector. And what this equation says? Say, that equation say that says that Differential of x, so the relative position of these two particles at time t, can be computed by multiplying a second order tensor, which is called f, who's defined by its components, which are the de derivatives, derivatives, the specific derivatives of the equations of motion with respect to the material coordinates. <coughs> times the relative position of these two particles at the reference configuration. And of course, this can be done for every particle x, and of course, it can be done at every time for, for every current time t. So, this is the equation that is called the fundamental equation of the formation that relates the relative position of two particles around in the neighborhood of a given one, capital X, Along t, in term, along t, in terms of the relative position of the same two particles at the reference configuration. So this answers our question. How are these, what information do I need in order to be able to describe or to know every <coughs> current relative position of two particles in terms of their initial relative position around a particle p? That is tensor. And this is the deformation gradient tensor. It's called the formation gradient tensor. It's called F, and that's what we have here. The deformation gradient tensor is first a second order tensor, because it, it has two indices. Second, the component IJ can be obtained in terms of the equations of motion. So if I can derive the every component of the material coordinate, spatial coordinates, with respect to the corresponding spatial material coordinates, then I obtain the, cor the corresponding Fij. So it's a second order tensor. By the way, this can be written, Fij is the component Ij of F, and this, look, can be written in that way. It's a symbolic product of the spatial coordinates vector, equations of motions, times the nabla. So look, that would be Xi here, derivative with respect to a J, capital J. Look, capital J, capital, not a small x. Remember, we defined Nabla. But Nabla was defined in terms as a symbolic operator that involved derivatives with respect to small x, with respect to spatial coordinates. And now I'm writing here something which is similar, but which involves symbolically derivative with respect to material coordinates, to capital X. So it's different, 
but I will denote with capital. I, mean, I said that everything which is referred to material would be capital. Again, I find the problem that this symbol, I don't know how to write the capital triangle. So in order to distinguish that from the spatial nabla, I define this material nabla by an upper, an upper line in here. Okay? So we can say that the, that is the initial definition of tensor deformation gradient tensor, material deformation gradient tensor, and this is the compact or the intrinsic description of that. Is the is a gradient, material gradient, but transposed, because gradient would be that first, that second, right? So that is transposed. So there is no specific name for that. We can call it the transposed material gradient of the equations of motion. Okay? So now, uh, and by the way, how is it computed? Whenever I want to compute these products, that symbolically I have to place first the vector of the, the, this vector. So it's x, x1, x2, x3. And then, I, since it's, it's an open product, I put the second transposed. So in horizontal, in a, in a column, in a, in a row. So derivative with respect x1, x2, x3. This is a matrix 3 times 1. This is a matrix 1 times 3. The result has to be a matrix 3 times 3, which is first row, first column, derivative of x1 with respect to capital X1. First row, second column, derivative of x1 with respect to x2, etc., etc., etc. So this is the very detailed description of the gradient of the formation tensor, component by component. Okay? And look, if I have that, then I can compute, as I told you, in virtue of the fundamental equation of the formation, I can compute, if I know this tensor, these equations, at every point, I can compute my goal, which was to the relation of the relative position at the present configuration in terms of the relative position at the reference configuration. That is what we call a measure of the formation. We see that this is not enough. As engineers, we need something else. We'll go back. We'll go there in the future. But so far, that's the first step. It's a fundamental measure that informs about relative position of particles. In terms of what? The question of motion, of course. Okay? And, uh, well, we can elaborate a little more about this. Let's imagine that now I start from the inverse equations of motion. So the equations that provide the spatial material position in terms of the spatial position. We know that we can pass from one to the other just by inverting the equations of motion. And then I could also do a similar operation now differentiating the capital X with respect to the small x. And we obtain a relatively similar equation, but here I obtain a term which is derivative of the capital XY with respect to the small xj. So this can be expressed in that way in terms of a tensor that is not the same than before. Look, before it was derivative of small x with respect to capital X. Here is the derivative with respect of capital X with small x. Okay, so now this, let me denote, denote putting a minus one here. What minus one, what does minus, minus one imply? It's the inverse, okay? I'm anticipating something. That tensor is going to be the inverse of the previous one. But I haven't proved it yet. So anyway, by doing that, that is an equation that I obtain just by differentiation that says the following. Now, I can obtain, if I know this, times, this, this tensor that we call inverse deformation gradient tensor, or spatial deformation gradient tensor, whose component ij is the derivative of the capital, the material coordinates with respect to the spatial coordinates, just by multiplying this tensor times the current relative position, I can obtain the original relative position. So the, the inverse of that, of the previous equation. Okay? So that is just the inverse of the previous equation. The, the fundamental equation of the formation says how is the current relative position in terms of the previous uh, relative position, the differential of capital X in terms of S. That, the one that we have obtained, is the inverse. It's just inverting this equation, passing that term to the other side and so on. Okay? So this is the, this is the uh, in definition of the deformation inverse or spatial differential gradient tensor 
which is defined as the gradient, the, the, the transpose gradient of the inverse equations of motions, now differentiated in terms of nabla, non nabla bar. This is the derivative with the spatial coordinates, not the material coordinates, and this is defined in that way, and it can be computed in that way. Okay? They are related to each other. In fact, it can be easily proven that the f minus 1, as the name indicates, is the inverse of f. Okay? If I take f, I compute the inverse, and I express that in terms of the special coordinates, I would obtain f minus 1. If I take I f minus 1, I compute the inverse, and I express, express it in terms of the material coordinates, I would obtain f. Okay? The questions are, that is the inverse of the equation, the fundamental equation of motion. Look, this is the proof that f times f minus 1, just by developing this equation in terms of the coordinates, we will say that by derivative of derivative, derivative of xi with respect to xk times derivative of xk with respect to j, in fact, is derivative of small xi with respect to small xj, which is 0 if xi is different from j, or 1 if xi is equal to j. This is the delta Kronecker. So what is the, the conclusion? That if I multiply f times f minus 1, which is the expression here, I obtain a tensor whose components are the delta Kronecker, which is the unique tensor. Okay, so this is the proof that one is the inverse of the other. Look, sometimes we could find that f is constant for the, 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 the formation, the gradient the formation, the formation tensor, the formation gradient tensor is not dependent on the particle. Okay? Then we say that the deformation is homogeneous. Look, you talk about not depending on time. When something doesn't depend on time, some spatial description doesn't depend on time, we said that the motion is, no, the, 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 the motion is stationary. stationary. Now, when something doesn't depend on space, we say it's homogeneous. Okay? Uh, what happens when x, the, the, the f, by any question, any reason, doesn't depend of, of x? That means that the formation, the relative motion, the relative position of all particles, all particles, are the same everywhere, uh, in, in all, for all particles. Okay? Which doesn't mean that there is no deformation. Eh? That means that it's constant everywhere in the, in the, in the, there's a deformation homogeneous. By the way, in a specific case is the following. Imagine that there is no motion. So that is this. Then what can say about the material and the spatial coordinates a long time? They are the same. What is the derivative of this with respect to x? Is the identity. Okay? So that if, then the, for a, a no motion case, that the formation, gradient of the formation tensor is not zero. For a motion, no motion case, don't be mistaken, that the formation gradient tensor is not zero, it's one. Okay? One. Sometimes you can say, well, there is no deformation here. No. In the in a strict, in a strict sense, in that case, when there is no deformation, the gradient of the formation tensor is one. And also the inverse, because the inverse of one is one. Okay? The inverse of the <coughs> tensor one is one.